In today's video, I wanna show you what is arguably one of the most important accessories when it comes to any type of analog or film photography. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Ricky. And in this video, I wanna talk all about light meters. So to kick things off and to get into the topic of external light meters, I want to take you back to when they were very first introduced in the cameras in the 1930s. Kodak were the masterminds who put the light meter in their very first camera called the Super 620. Now what Kodak intended with their very first light meter was for the camera to be able to electronically determine what the exposure settings need to be for the particular scene or subject that you're photographing. The way Kodak did this was by coming up with a term called middle grey. Middle grey is essentially 18% of tonality between black and white and what Kodak determines is the middle point of exposure that needs to be achieved in order to get an even exposure across your image. Now without going into too much depth and detail on middle grey and the percentages and all the specific details, in this video I want to focus on just the raw facts and the simple terminology to get you started in metering light with an external light meter. So why do I think that external light meters are the most important accessory you can buy in 2024 for film and analog photography? Well, when it comes to film, it all starts and stops with exposing your image correctly. If you do not expose your image correctly, then you don't have an image to post online. And it is simple as that. You can be the best photographer in the world with beautiful framing, with beautiful storytelling, all this just amazing qualities. But if you don't expose your image when it comes to film photography, then you do not have an image. And it is just simple as that. If you underexpose, if you overexpose, then the image is ruined. It's not like digital photography where you have these massive raw files that it doesn't really matter if you under or overexpose because you have so much detail in the image, you can pull it back in post. In film, you don't really have that flexibility. You need to be nailing your photos 90 to 95% of the time in camera. Sure, minor touch-ups can be made once you get your scans back, but you don't have that freedom of a very, very large file such as a digital camera where you're getting a raw image with loads of information. And that is why I think having something like an external light meter is so important. Now, there is a big difference between your internal camera light meter and an external light meter. They're both essentially doing the same thing by reading light. It is just more or less the way that they do them, which is quite different. Your camera's internal light meters are designed to read reflected light. So whatever your camera is pointing at, it's reading the light that is coming off your subject. Whereas an external light meter, you place up to your subject with the little white dome facing your light source, and it's reading the light that is coming into your subject. Now, it all sounds the same, but in practice it is quite different. Because sometimes in your scene, you don't have what is known as middle gray for your camera to determine what exposure settings it should be at. And this is where you can lead to inconsistencies with your exposure settings. If you don't always have something that is middle gray, say grass or a specific thing in your subject that you know, a specific thing in your scene that you can look at and go, right, I think that is kind of the middle, you know, the middle gray, the middle point of this image that I want to expose for, then your camera is going to sometimes start to throw out some kind of wild numbers. And that can lead to a lot of under or overexposed shots. Whereas if you take the time to expose with an external light meter, you are getting a much more accurate and even reading across your scene giving you better exposures in the long run. I specifically started using a light meter from virtually my first rolls of film. I started off using a cheap app on my phone, which got me by, but the results weren't that great. They weren't that accurate. 
and then I picked up this Sekonic L308B. I picked this particular one up for around 50 bucks off Facebook Marketplace. You can find them all over the internet, brand new, secondhand. There are a whole bunch of different ones ranging from cheap to very expensive. So buy whatever suits your needs. But why I use this every single time I take a photo is because it trains me and it's trained my eye over time to be able to see light a little bit differently. When you start off taking film and analog photographs, you're essentially guessing. If you don't have a light meter, you're essentially guessing what your exposure needs to be. There is no, like a digital camera, you can't preview the image, you can't see the image before taking it. So if you don't have something to tell you, or at least give you a guideline of what your exposure needs to be, you are really just guessing. Now I use this light meter for every single one of my photos. So every time I took a photo, I exposed, looked at the settings and put those settings into my camera, then took the photo. What that did was it trained me over time to be able to look at scenes and go, right, I remember taking a photo in similar lighting that was these settings. I think I'm going to be kind of within the ballpark to expose like this. And I would kind of make a little bit of a game out of it. I would guess and go, all right, well, okay, I think this scene is going to be f2.8 at 1 over 500, let's just say, for example. And then I would check and I'd go, oh, you know, I was pretty close. And over time, doing that trained me to be able to see light a little bit more differently. And by doing that over time, it really did help me become a better photographer. Because you're not always guessing. You're not always just... I'll just take the shot and see what happens. You're slowing down, you're taking the time to expose your photos correctly. And in thus doing so, when you expose your photos and when you drop off your roll of film, instead of only getting 10 or five or three usable shots out of your roll, you're getting almost 35, 36 fantastic shots out of your roll. So you're getting more photos, you're getting more value out of using something like this, an external light meter. Now, as I mentioned, prices for external light meters can be extremely cheap to extremely expensive. So at the end of the day, buy whatever is in your budget. Experiment with a light meter. I guarantee you, you will get better exposures than relying on your in-camera light meter. Camera light meters, like I said, they were first introduced in the 1930s. And depending on what sort of camera you are shooting on and how old it is and the condition that it's in, its light meter might not be extremely accurate. They are common things to go out and die on cameras. So you might be wondering why your photos always suck. And it might just be because of that. It might be because you're not exposing them correctly. And I guarantee you taking the time to expose your photos correctly when it comes to film will yield you better results. I guarantee it. So that is my rant and my thoughts on what is what I recommend the best accessory for film photography and that is external light meters go out and pick yourself up one let me know in the comments below if it helped you and with that said I will wrap this video up here thank you for watching hope you found this video enjoyable hope you learned something from it I will leave some links in the description with a whole bunch more information on middle gray on more details in light meters if you want to nerd out and really go into the specifics but this video really was just intended to give you the basic facts some basic knowledge and some basic understanding of how light meters work and how they will make you a better photographer so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video peace